wake up, get dressed, go to school, come back, do homework, go to bed, wake up, get dressed, go to school, come back, do homework, go to bed, wake up, yada, 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 yada. This was a pretty relatable episode. This is Supper Villain. In this episode, we surprisingly don't focus on the Powerpuff Girls, but their neighbor, Harold, who they've never mentioned up until this point, and he's a little bored. Like, he does the same thing every day, wake up, has breakfast, goes to work in a mustard factory, of all things, comes back home, watches the news where he gets his enjoyment out of seeing the power the villains win, which... Then he goes, works on his alter ego as a supervillain, then wake, goes to bed, and the whole thing starts over, and... This obsession and boredom comes to a head when not only do the Powerpuff Girls like successfully win a three-day hostage situation, which kudos to Mojo, that has to be a record. Like you're able to hold the mayor hostage for three days. But anyway, so anyway, girls triumph and they have dinner with their neighbors, and the Harold tries to suppress this villain side, but it comes out he holds the professor hostage, but a food fight breaks out, the police show up, and ironically the police save the day, and Harold gets arrested. So this was a really good episode. First off, it was an interesting episode in that we got to, it was an episode from a civilian's perspective, it wasn't the town's, like, I mean, it's, for an average show, this must be a pretty boring life. I mean, you just go about your day and occasionally, like, a monster or villain will threaten the town and something exciting will happen. Like, that's your excitement in Townsville is when the Powerpuff Girls are fighting a villain. Like, your life isn't interesting. But, yeah, and, and they do a great job showing that, how, like, you know, how he's not necessarily evil. He's just kind of bored and fed up with the monotonous life. And this... They're, they do a really good job for, like, the first few minutes just showing, not telling his life. Like, just showing his routine and, like, and they show it, like, enough times that you kind of are feeling the monotony of it, like, and even to a point where it's speeding up faster. Like, psychologically, that is how life works. If you do the same thing enough times, eventually the days are just going to start going by fast and it's all just going to start blurring together. And each time he's smiling less. And it does a really good job of just showing the boredom that comes from that and the feeling of escapism. Like, I mean, it's something I can kind of relate to from school where I'd have the same schedule every day and it literally would get monotonous. College, it was better in the sense that every day was something different. But yeah, I mean, just work. I mean, it depends on what your job is, but if I mean, if you're not doing something fun that you enjoy, your life can get really, really boring really fast, particularly if you're doing a boring desk job or factory. Factory jobs in general are just supposedly very unhealthy for you. Which, I don't know, it's why I really don't want to have a desk or shop right job. I mean, I might have to at some point, but... I j it's just so monotonous. It's like mentally what that does to you. It's like... And this episode did a great job of showing that. And it kind of reminds me a bit of Walter Mitty, if you've ever, anyone's read the short story. Basically, it's what this guy is kind of bored of his life, so he keeps fantasizing himself, doing exciting things. Like, he's a superhero, or he's a war veteran, or something, and then we'll cut back, and he's just a boring, bubbling guy. And this episode did that great, too. Like, I love how we don't hear his voice until, like, halfway through, and it's this very pathetic geeky I, f I can't do it but it's this very geeky voice voiced nicely by jeff bennett and he's a very fun villain he's just a he's just nuts as a villain like he's just pathetic wannabe you know just clearly bored and fed up with, and wants some escape some change and what's funny is just how seriously everyone takes him like his ray gun probably doesn't work. I mean, it's literally a hair dryer with ray gun written on it. He's just an ordinary guy. Like, the pop girls could just beat him up in, like, a minute if they wanted to. But, like, everyone takes him seriously. Like, the professor's terrified. He's just slowly eating his dinner to, like, make sure, like, he doesn't eat. And 
He's like, yes. This art would be nice. And the Powerpuff Girls are just so serious. Like, they just want to all beat him up. And I'm trying to think what else. And even though this guy's a villain, he still listens to his wife. It's like, yes, dinner. And then kill him. But yeah, let's just kind of feel bad for the villain. I mean, it's not sympathetic like the Batman animated series villains are, but I still get for him. There is that part of me that it does kind of pity him. And yeah, but overall, I thought it was a fun, really well done episode, particularly the storyboarding I thought was really good from, again, Harold's routine life to like the dinner table, all that just major storyboarding something from what i understand the new reboot show doesn't have and yeah that's all i have to say i mean i can't really think of that much else i liked except they were um the kids were kind of cute although i swear one of the powerpuff girls voiced them because they're really good at doing cute adorable voices the insistence on jacks which shows how dated this episode is like seriously this episode came out in like the late 90s early 2000s probably who plays Jax anymore? No one. I never played Jax as a kid. I don't know anyone who plays Jax. If you play Jax or someone, please let me know. But yeah. There was a couple animation hiccups. The most notable one is the professor's eyes when we first see him outside. It's like, they're not drawn well. And then another thing is like the couch, the design of the couch. But that's probably more a stylistic choice than anything. Hey, yeah, that's all I have to say for now, except... I just have one question. What does the mom do for a living? Is she a housewife or does she actually have a job? And the reason why I'm asking this is because... I might have just realized I didn't straighten that up. But I'm asking this because, like, okay, the dad works a factory job at a mustard factory. Like, that must not be a high-paying job. So what does the mom... And do that not only is she able to raise two kids but they're able to avoid afford a nice house in a suburban town like seriously like he's working a factory job how i mean okay public school education is free but even so like all the food bills housing like what does the mom do who knows maybe if she ever comes back we'll get an answer but other than that, it was a very interesting and welcome change from the routine of Powerpuff Girls that we get to see someone else's routine. So, your life right now, or fine, I guess the question I'm going to ask outside of thoughts is, has there ever been a point in your life where you worked a job that just, or life that was just really monotonous and boring and you needed some escape? If you want to share, please comment. If not, you can just say what you think of the episode. And I'll see you guys probably in about a month, that's usually how this works, on the next Powerpuff Girls vlog. So until then, take care. And if and please, m mix up your day. Put some routine in there. Don't get bored. Don't go crazy. Like, just anything. Keep yourself at occupied. As long as it's not being a super film. Take care.